Shake, Rattle, and Troll, a show for the serious fishermen, as well as the novice looking for tips from the pros. Shake, Rattle, and Troll is brought to you by Bill Luke Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Now, here's your host, saltwater fisherman and tournament pro, Don McDowell. Yeah, man. Hey, I'm Don McDowell. Welcome to Shake, Rattle, and Troll today. Stay in the house. It's just hot outside. Hot, real hot. Damn hot. Going to be hot for a long time. Hot. Yeah. Hey. JK's in the house, and I want to congratulate you on your uh, new term as president of the Arizona Gear Association. Woo! Oh, gee, thank you. Okay, and uh, that other set of hands there is uh, Brother Don Ortiz from DEO Productions, the Dina Preston Pan. I would have expected you to be all suited up in your battle rattle and uh, uh, you know. ready to go to... Or at least a tambourine to Hungary. Yeah, or, 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 that, or yeah exactly. I still haven't seen any luggage passes for me yet. <laughs> you know, I've 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 groveled for uh, oh, yeah. uh, personal valet, security, driver of the limousine, uh, volunteer to drive the airplane. I'm the translator for crying out loud. Oh God, the Hungarian scared. translator. Yes. Yeah, when I he understand. Says, hey, I'm a trans. I'm going. No, don't say that. <laughs> wow. Hey, a lot of stuff going on out there. We're moving into the 4th of July season, and uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, if you're looking for some place to go, something to do on the uh, 4th of July celebration, Pleasant Harbor has their annual July 3rd, 4th of July. Oh, that makes all the sense in the world. Well, actually, it, you know, it Is there does. feminine logic involved in this? Water. Yeah, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't I'm, touch it. Water. We're going to move on. <laughs> it, it's probably one of the coolest uh, 4th of July celebrations uh, that we have. We have a lot, but uh, the uh, marina's under new ownership, and uh, they welcome everybody. And it's just a good place to go hang out topside. If you have a boat, hang out uh, by the marina. They're, they're setting uh, fireworks off on the first point just south of the marina, and it's uh, it's an awesome display. As you can see the reflections off the water. Which and, is very cool, I agree. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, National Guard is going to be out there with a rock climbing wall um, for all ages. Uh, food, vendors, music, all kinds of fun stuff, and uh, I, I would highly recommend it. And then uh, moving into uh, the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, the uh, Fairmont Scottsdale Princess is having their third annual Freedom Festival honoring the military with food, entertainment. We'll have a uh, fishing seminar starting at 8 a.m. in the morning, going until 9 o'clock. And then there's a, uh, let's call it a fishing derby, okay? A fishing derby. A fishing derby, yeah. We're going back to the beginning. Uh, they have rods available. And you know what? I checked out the rods, and, and they're decent. Most of the time when you rent a rod someplace or Let's just say qu questionable, but these are closed face. Uh, they're kid proof. Oh, Ooh, that's a good one. John proof. Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's yeah. cold. He's uh, in yeah. then. Yeah, and uh, the uh, lagoon that they have. There are several lagoons uh, to choose from, but uh, there are largemouth bass. Uh, you know, and I've seen them up to probably you know right around two and three quarters, three pounds. Serious? Big old whiskered catfish. Yeah. Bazillions of bluegill. So. Oh boy. Uh, we're going to engage the uh, whoever's there, a lot, a lot of military folks, obviously, families, kids. Uh, we'll have some prizes at the end of the day uh, for the big fish. They can catch as many fish as they would like to, but they can only weigh one big one. Oh, hmm. that's it. And, and it's catch and release. That no, keeps it uh, fun. No, huh? no fish fry uh, at the end. Um, this is all that catch and release stuff, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Can we do that with elk? No, wouldn't that be cool? Oh, boy, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> boy, would I be out there a lot. Thunk. Thunk. Yeah, so anyway, uh, uh, Arizona Bass Nation will be out there with their trailer. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, information will have some pass outs that I think are pertinent to uh, don't move a muscle, clean, drain, and dry protocols on the quagga muscle. Do you have to worry about that when you're at the Scottsdale Princess that your BMW may have some muscles attached to it? Don, how are you doing this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, thanks. How about yourself, everybody? Oh, not bad, not bad. But uh, anyway, check out the Scottsdale uh, Fairmont Princess. <laughs> wow. You know, Left fielder. <laughs> uh, somebody has to try. You know, I sat in that seat last week, and it was very difficult. You did a fine job. And, and I want to welcome Jennifer back. She's been, yes. uh, been off. She is back go, in the hunt. 
and we're we're moving along. Uh, some of the other things going on. Uh, I learned this a couple of years ago. Ram has a fifteen hundred that's coming out two thousand fourteen this year in thirteen. Another oxymoron. Mm-hmm. Driving in the parkway, parking in the driveway, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, the 2014 1500 redesigned Ram is coming out with a diesel. Mm. Yeah. You know, we, we took the road trip from hell. Um, it wasn't yesterday. It was the day Friday. I don't Friday. know. John, to be yeah, real okay. honest with you, the way the calendar has been, I'm not sure what day it is. I just. I think it was Friday afternoon. He and I took the road trip from hell. And I kept staring at the miles per gallon that his dodge was getting and it was like are you kidding me are you kidding me come on no yeah. really i gotta get one yeah he was getting consistently 39 to 40 miles per gallon going all across the room and coming back pretty uh, much flat ground yeah but, that's great well there were some inclines there were some spots but you yeah were, you, i mean and he was not he was not easy on the throttle let's put it that I way i hear you i'm on my fifth dodge Nice. I love it. Yeah. And I've had nothing but Dodge trucks all along since I was beginning playing music. That was the first thing I threw in a truck was my gear. Yeah. And uh, when I didn't have a truck, I had a Dodge van. Uh, so, it's, you know, this is, let's see, this is my fifth truck, and they've all been Dodges. Yeah, you know, the uh, fi- I'm, I'm really pro 5.9 Cummins uh, only because you can. they're a hell of a power plant. Right. Left alone. They're they're awesome, and, and so is the six point seven uh, new Blue Tech technology. But you can tinker with the five nine, and the engineers uh, decided, you know what, we're going to make the Blue Tech so you can't mess with it. We have outsmarted them. So <laughs> finally, yeah. Finally. Well, it it took a couple of years to figure out how to bypass this and that, and you know with chips and. Uh, uh, Chips, doctor, especially. doctor performance has got a, a what they call a stage two predator box. You unplug your sensors, plug it in, plug it into the into the computer, change the intake, change the exhaust. Um, and one of them, one other important part is the uh, the elbow coming out of the breather that goes into the turbocharger. Right. Uh, get the smooth one. True Flow's got one and. Bam, I'm telling you, the gas mileage is uh, off the chart. Outrageous. I've got a uh, tuner console for this particular uh, year, and uh, you can mess around with it. It's got an extreme setting, which is not real good on your tires. Uh, but the gas mileage is, is as good as the uh, secondary setting, which is eco- economy and performance, and then they've got a tow mode. So You don't want to uh, run around in tow yeah. mode. No, no granny gearing not it. really. It smokes and squalls and carries on, but it'll pull. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, but anyway, uh, Bill Luke Chrysler Jeep and Dodge I-17 in West Camelback Road uh, has a super big sale coming on for the 4th of July, uh, super discounts, super inventories, and uh, a lot of good service, so check them out. Uh, they're also doing something over at the Fiat store. I passed one this morning. Little Booger was really kind of hard to keep up, a little black uh, pop, a Barth, right. or a Fiat pop, mm-hmm. and a neat little car. They're sm- I they're, haven't seen that one. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, small. they're really stylish. I, I had but the sleek last uh, lady had a Ferrari uh, license plate on it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, uh, other than that, uh, check those guys out. And I want to thank City of Mesa. They they put on a wonderful uh, 4th of July celebration again on the 29th. Um, it was a little bit warm outside. Uh, we had... Uh, uh, what was there, nine, eight or nine uh, military. vintage military vehicles there, including some kind of a tank that I'd never seen for the first time. Where was the tank? I missed it. It was that. over uh, by Overland uh, Off-Road Recoveries, uh, Dues and Half. Oh, okay. So uh, pretty interesting. So uh, as we go through the uh, program today, we'll be talking to Ricky over at uh, H&M Landing in the Tackle Shop. Oh, good. Uh, we'll All talk right. to James Guggenauer, see what's going on on the Mother Lake and uh, around here. And we're going to be, uh, t- you know, giving you some nuances on fishing uh, with candy bars. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, big bait for uh, yellowtail. Sweet. Tooth. Not not so much the albacore and the bluefin tuna, but uh, we're, we're going to talk about that and uh, probably start off. I've had a couple of emails uh, requesting, well, what do I take? What do I do? You know, what what's the deal? And uh, there's a couple things you need to know about and. Uh, We'll, we'll go through. Oh, man, they fixed the clock. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you can now deal. look up and see a clock. Nice. 
<laughs> so uh, we'll ever aware of his surroundings. <sighs> yeah. Welcome to KFNX 1100 <laughs> here in the mothership. 50,000 watts. When are you guys rolling out? Ah, uh, we are actually, uh, let's see, Thank we're you. playing 4th of July over here at Luke Air Force Base Freedom Fest, which would be great for the Dina Preston Band. Uh, you can also look on our website at dinapreston.com. Uh, find out okay, times so and stuff like just, that. I, I know you're playing on the 4th of July, but what, is it really the 4th? What, what day is that? That is Thursday. Okay, actually the 4th. Actually on the 4th, not like yeah. uh, the other events that are on the 3rd that call it the 4th. That's really odd, but uh, it seems to work for them. Uh, yeah, this is actually our third year we've been at Luke Air Force Base. Uh, um, usually we are overseas touring, uh, you know, playing somewhere for the troops or something like that, and... Uh, we're really glad to be over at Luke Air Force Base. They do a really fine show out there. Uh, great fireworks. Uh, they they do the flyover, you know, with the Blue Angels and stuff like that. And that's Blue that's, Angels. That's Navy, isn't it? That's Navy. Yeah. What are they doing out at? Actually, uh, it's not blue. It's not the Blue Angels. It's uh, it's another team that's similar. Uh, Air Force. Yeah, I think it is the Thunderbirds. You're right. Yeah. They call and, them Thunder uh, for a reason. Exactly. And uh, they they usually have about twenty five, thirty five hundred people come out there to support the base so that's that's a pretty nice turnout that is and of course point. being uh that it's going to be hot all i just ask is that people really stay hydrated that's the biggest thing here on these hot weeks that we got uh we we haven't had the monsoon to cool us down yet it's coming it's coming you can feel it yeah <laughs> all righty y'all we're going to take a little bit of a short break thanks some of our sponsors including bill of chrysler jeep dodge ram got some big fiat news. Bank I'm Don McDowell. Janos Kolasa. Don Ortiz. Say what? That's Hungarian. Janos. John. Janos. Was your mom mad at you? No. Oh, He's really? working on that translator. All right, hey, we'll be gig. right back. <laughs> How about a little test drive down by the lake? There's a place I know about. All righty, we're back. Uh, talking with Don Ortiz, getting ready to be uh, exiled over in Hungary. And, um, yeah. That's not an exile. That is a <laughs> vacation from heaven. A paid one at that. Yeah. Nice. That's a nice gig. Uh, yeah, we're getting ready to, we're in the process of working with the State Department and the U.S. Embassy of, of Hungary uh, to perform in Budapest. Uh, we should be going there. Uh, it's around the, the 6th or 7th of September, and we'll be there. I can't go anyway because that's uh, archery season's open and uh, dove season's open. Oh, darn. Bummer. This week, darn. Bummer. Elk tag. Oh, you don't have one of those elk tags, do you, this year, Don? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we haven't been to Hungary since 1998, the Dino Preston Band. Wow. So it'll be really nice to go back there. Uh, we were invited by a gentleman uh, who we worked with at the U.S. Embassy in Azerbaijan in, in 2007. Oh, yeah, that's a mouthful. Um, and uh, so he's now stationed in, in Hungary, and I had sent him actually a text with our with our uh, Arizona cactus all lit up at nice. Christmas, and uh, his text back was, do you want to come and rock Budapest? Uh, and it's like, let's see how we can get that started going. Yeah. So we've been working on this since December uh, with the State Department and the U.S. embassies. It takes a long time, and it goes through so many different hands and channels. Uh, before DOD we'll, involved? They are not. This is strictly the State Department with the, uh, the relationship of the U.S. embassy. Okay. Uh, which is really nice. Uh, the nice part about this is, uh, Dina is also, um, she has her doctorate degree and she's actually, uh, gonna be a guest speaker doing six events there as a guest speaker. It's education live week. Live with Dr. Dina. Yeah, live with Dr. D. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, so that'll be a lot of fun besides playing. Uh, I know they'll show us a lot of international sites. Uh, but a big part of it, we're also going to be a, a part of the history uh, making there as they're changing over their ambassador. And so they want us to perform for that ceremony as the new ambassador is being uh, um, uh, it's basically sworn in. Yes, not sworn in, but will be the event at the party. Okay. Uh, so it'll be a historic moment for the Dean of Preston Band to be involved in that. Um and then, of course, playing there is just awesome. I think getting out of Arizona is a historic event. Well, I'll tell you what's really cool about it. It's also they have us. Um, they're calling this the uh, the history of rock and roll. So we're going to be playing actually the history of rock and roll from like the early fifties, from Elvis. 
all the way up. Don't mention 1956 while you're there. Don't do that. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, no. Exactly. Or Russians at that time. No. no. We know that very well. So it'll be an Ambassadors of Goodwill tour uh, and uh, bring in some rock and roll, American rock and roll to them. Uh, so it'll so be a lot of fun. Be sure to brush up on uh, Shake, Rattle, and Troll theme song. Share that with them. Oh, yeah. You We've should. got that one doctored in. Yeah, you okay. kidding? That's a big hit. I'd like to hear that and see what their response is from Budapest. What? Yeah, it would be yeah. fun. Yeah, the best part is uh, we're right now in the midst of uh, we've got a new song that we're working on to go along with the video of our tours for U.S. embassies and things like that. Uh, uh, if you get a chance, you're out there, you can actually look at the Dina Preston website, dinapreston.com. You can see our Field of Blue video as, as it stands right now. It'll That's show nice you one. our yeah, 20 world tours, 40 countries our band's been uh blessed to go to and and it's great representing arizona in the united states in that way you know uh especially through music you're bringing happiness to people absolutely you know it's it's the language that crosses all barriers so that's that's a wonderful thing about going to hungary and uh being able to do those kind of things you know we've uh, talked about you know i'm glad you brought that up fishing is an international language oh absolutely you know i don't care who you're talking to where you are race color creed religion you start talking fishing, politics are out the door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That doesn't come into play when you're out there with a rod. It's 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 about you and feeling that that yeah the atmosphere out there. It's great when you get two guys or a couple guys out there. You never hear that. Well, kind of we're stuff out you know there. we do quite a bit with Vern Bagley from Voice of Veterans, and Vern still uh, you know things do take a long time. But he's talking about doing a uh, a fishing segment over in Russia with a Russian soldier and an American soldier. That would be Politics wonderful. Politics aside, we're going to take the helmets mm-hmm. off, and this is my rod. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Let's okay. go catch some you know, that's, class. You know, that's really good. Have you ever seen the movie The Fisherman? Uh, help me out. It's, Paul, uh, Paul Newman? Uh, no, no, this is actually about um, a Yemen, uh, a, a Prince or a a mir in Yemen who wants to bring freshwater trout to Yemen. And it's a trout or salmon? It's salmon. Salmon. And it was an incredible uh, movie. Very moving in the same sense that you're bringing two different cultures together and yet you're speaking one language. Yeah, it's kind of like going to California and jumping on a tuna boat, which we're going to talk about. Uh, You you know, those guys over there, the the locals, Mm -hmm. man. You talk about a different culture. <laughs> it is because a, a lot of these guys out there, they're using the uh, the half three quarter, and even the day boats are uh, subsistence fishermen. Really? Yeah. And if you're fortunate enough to get on uh, uh, a multi day trip, day and a half, two day, two and a half day, with with the Japanese guys, the Buddha head fishermen, mm-hmm. man, you talk about focused. These guys. Are so regimented, it's, it, it's scary. You know, you think the military, er, 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 no. These guys march on the boat in unison. They all wear their rain gear. They have their tackle box, their rods neatly organized. Everything's set, ready to roll. And they have their uh, Tupperware box with their food in it. Ooh. As a deckhand, it, it's pretty easy. I mean, you can have a uh, last time I was out with was on uh, Norm Kawaganaw's boat, the Shogun 80 footer. And uh, at that time, I had uh, galley duty, most time was dishes, uh, deck duty, uh, bait tank duty, and got to drive the boat, which is way That's cool. That's all worth it there. But, you know, you have, you know, 35 uh, Buddha head fishermen on. They bring their own food. Yeah. That's it. So all, all we had to do is cook for the crew, which made it easy. The the bad part about it, these guys were so if if you gaff go down to gaff fish, you better have a head gaff because they will hand you your head if you start sticking steaks. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's the prime sushi. And it, you know, we talk about we're going to talk about the tuna shuffle. Follow your line. Follow your line. These guys, they don't talk. They fish. And everybody's right straight in front of their line every time, all the time. They don't get tangled, and bam, load the boat. So, you know, anyway, I I, 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 I digress. It, it's cool. i got to watch this. 
That's what you call low you, maintenance. You need, you need to be there, and uh, we're working on some stuff trying to get over there uh, pretty quick because uh, next week is shot with the Fourth uh, of July Independence Celebration. The week after is ICAST, <laughs> and probably the, the three weeks from now, mm-hmm. lock load, throw the string. I'm game. Yeah. Told you that. I'll drive all night. Well, yeah, I, I think it probably needs to be a, a day, day and a half, at least a day and a half trip, because right now what's, what's happening, the uh, three-quarter day boats, half and three-quarter day boats, uh, yellowtail are spotty at the islands, mm-hmm. so you have to go a little bit, little bit deeper. Uh, they are catching um, uh, sand bass, rockfish, uh Quite a few barracuda, which is a blast, but I don't want to, you know, if there's yellowtail and, and tuna sticking their noses up, I don't want to be playing with barracuda. No, definitely no, not. And, and I don't really care about catching calicos or uh, uh, sculping rockfish, any of that kind of thing. So when we come back, uh, we'll uh, start packing our bag and uh, give you a heads up on, on how to do this. I'm Don McDowell with Don Ortiz, John Colazar. Do I have to call you Mr. President now? No. Please don't. Thank you. We'll be back. Yeah, man, we're back. All right, hey, let's uh, let's pack it up and uh, go tuna fishing. So sounds good. Yeah. Okay. The first thing you're going to need uh, uh, that I want to talk about your gear bag. You don't need to take a lot of stuff. I don't have a lot of stuff to take. Well, there, there. I'm going to tell you what kind of stuff you need. Uh, you know, you need to start off with some type of a waterproof uh, travel bag or a gym bag. Uh, not a real big one. You know, just enough to uh, carry uh, portables. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you want to take your shaving gear and, you know, your personal effect bags, deodorant, meds, blah, 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 blah. And if you have any, uh, this isn't, uh, this next comment isn't so much directed <clears throat> to, uh, a single day or three quarter day, but if you have any special diet needs or medication, or have a uh, potential of having a medical malfunction, you, John, need to talk. We call it special K. Yes, special needs. Oh yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> thank you. Just tell, you know, tell, tell the skipper, and uh, they'll they'll keep an eye on you. But uh, you know, aside from your personal effects, a uh, hand towel. And a full-size towel because you are going to get wet, bottom line. You're going to get sea spray and stuff off the deck, and uh, the, the decks are going to be bloody, and it's uh, uh, quite messy. But anyway, uh, you have plenty of time, and most all the boats have uh, uh, accommodating uh, showers and heads on the boat so you clean up before you hit the beach, uh, along, along with the uh, towel, uh, a small pillow. The di- the bunks that they have are, uh, let's just say they're they're adequate, but they're Spartan. You get a blanket, and you get a uh, a pillow. But you need to bring another pillow because the pillows are the pillow they give you is like a three foot three inch by three. Inch. Yeah, they're like I would liken them like at America's best. You oh, know. No. So don't bring your buckwheat pillow with you. No, <laughs> no. Okay, and then uh, obviously a couple things for personal protection: uh, sunglasses and uh, a lanyard or something to keep them on your head are a must. And head cover, a cap or uh, do rag, anything. Cause you're, sunblock, you're, all that. That's next on the list. Yeah, sunblock for your your hands and your face and whatever else is exposed. Uh, and lip balm. With, with a, at least, I'm saying at least a 48 uh, uh, factor on it. Uh, I like to keep a small first aid kit because you're, you know, the likelihood of getting stuck, cut, is out there. Somebody always does something stupid, and you may not do it to yourself, but if you're, let, let's just say, out on the Malahini yesterday, they had. Uh, Let's see, 42 anglers out there with hooks, knives. <laughs> Four, 40, 42 times trouble Sounds hooks. Sounds like a bunch of pirates. That's, a, that's yeah. 136 <laughs> hooks. 42 hours yeah. at any time. And, you know, the, the Malahini is a big boat. And, um, it'll, you know, I've, I've fished it a number of, number of times. And, uh, you know, 40 people out there all trying to be in the same spot at the same time is uh, pretty interesting but where it really gets interesting is when the when the fish start hooking up 
And everybody's crossing over each other. Out of that 40, let's just say half of them hook up. Oh, boy. So you get 40 lines in the water. You got 20 fish that are pissed, don't want to go to the boat. Uh Uh-uh. And this guy is over on the port side, and his line's clear over on the starboard side, so he's just crossed about 12 other lines. There's there's going to be a malfunction. Do you go over or under? Depends on what we'll talk about. That that's a fair question. Um, yeah. Old sneakers or deck boots? Uh, I prefer the deck boots um, over sneakers. Cause if you take new sneakers, they're worthless. They will be old sneakers yeah. in a day. Uh, it gets pretty nasty on. on but the deck boots, uh, I have steel-toed boots, uh, which are just a, a personal preference i uh, usually work in the engine room and i still have those boots and you drop a heat exchanger or something on your foot boom so the steel toes help uh and then you can roll them down it's kind of a puss in boots uh logo kind of a thing uh t- take a lot of heat but at the end of the day uh last thing you want is a, a yellow tail or an albacore or a blue fin to go across your shins because there's not a lot of a lot of meat there on your shins they will. There's yeah. none on mine. And, and It'd be a bad day at the office there. Yeah. yeah uh, I'm carrying scars. Look like I got hit with a weed ear. Um, I know people who have done that, too, by the way, hitting themselves with a weed whacker while it's running. It's not pretty. The, I, don't, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've seen me do that. Uh, <laughs> a light windbreaker, rain gear, or a poncho, something to block the, uh, block the wind because it gets breezy out there. The... Um, I think probably the most important thing is something that's water resistant. So you know, like a light water resistant nylon. Right. Is what you know. Th- this is an old list, and uh, we've got. Can you post that, by the way, for it for anybody going? Uh, over I there? can. Yeah, we've got new technology out there with you know, like Under Armour. Sure. You know, it, it's really thin, keeps you warm. Uh, Under Armour T-shirts always good because what you know, you're going to leave early in the morning, and. Uh, Historically, your weather conditions, you're going to have overcast. I don't care what day it is. It's yeah, going to be overcast. Morning. You're going to have some Thule fog, perhaps, and it's damp. Yeah. Real damp. Everything's going to be wet, going to be dripping, and you're going to be cold about the time they leave the bait receiver. Yep. And uh, moving on, uh, needle nose pliers or diagonal side cutters are a must or both. reason being I say both is because most of the time the needle nose don't have adequate uh, cutting surface on it to be effective. And, mo- and and you don't need expensive ones because they're going to rust. Yeah. Uh, you know, unless you're going to oh, spend yeah. you know, somewhere between 40 and 60 bucks for, you know, Shimano's got a real nice nice pair of uh, dikes, uh, diagonal side cutters. Uh, they're long and they've got a 90 degree turn down. Um, stop it. <laughs> we're, we're just going to keep going. Keep, roll, roll, roll. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if it's the first time and you, you don't know if you're going to do it again, Harbor Freight. They're two dollars, three dollars and ninety nine cents. If they if you lose them, you don't care. If they get rusted, which they will, you don't care anyhow. Don't really That's care right. anyway. But there are some deals over there. Uh, day at the docks, and you kind of look around at uh, some of the yard sales and stuff. Depending on what day you go, you get them wrapped with uh, nylon cord on, on the uh, handles so they don't slip out of your hands. Uh, old fishing clothes, you know. Don't worry about going over there looking cool. I got a new shirt. I got new shorts. Wrong. You're going to get trashed. Bloody, let's say. Uh, I wear shorts no matter what. Long pants, uh, T-shirts, and a sweatshirt with a hood. Uh, advisable. And then uh, waterproof cameras. Uh, the problem with taking your cell phone is... The saltwater environment is not good for iPhones. Definitely not. Even the waterproof um, covers the outer box and, and some mm-hmm. of them. Better to take uh, a GoPro. Them, you know, take a waterproof camera, stick it in your pocket. They're you know they're cheap. They're four ninety nine. Go back Absolutely. to Walgreens, have the things put on a disc, put them on your computer, and all that. You know, I've seen too many guys. You know, you can't make a phone call once you leave buoy one. You lose phone consciousness. Um, so anyway, just, just be advised and, and what are you put it, your cell phone in a plastic Ziploc bag. They have some cell phone covers now where you can take them, function with them and you can shoot underwater pictures with your iPhone because it's, a, it's a tight seal environment and you can actually take it out. So uh, you can, but it's just, 
okay, not advisable, yeah. but if you want to. I was going to say, I saw could... a guy come out of the, the water with his totally filled with water. Oh. He didn't seal it correctly. Not going to do that. Not, go, not going to risk it. <laughs> well, there's always a solution of rice. Go out in a bag of rice. Okay. Rice. And um, a couple other words of wisdom here. Uh, most of the things I tell you, I tell you because I know them and I've learned them the hard way. If you go, if you're going to Mexico, take your own PFD, please. And when you get on board, a couple things are going to happen. You're going to have a sign-in list. When you leave the landing office, you will you will have uh, your Mexican permit and hopefully all the stuff that you need. And uh, you can uh, rent your equipment. From Rick over at H&M Tackle, uh, H&M Land, they do, they do a good job on equipment. Uh, they're, they're, they keep everything just top notch. Uh, they'll advise you of what bait you're going to need. Uh, the first stop you're going to make once you get on the boat and get signed in, they give you a number. Okay, uh, Mr. Ortiz, your number 18. John, your number two. So you keep that number with you at all time. That's your galley number because you go in and order whatever you want. Food-wise. And you can right. just watch your number. Or if you know Don's 18, <laughs> so he gets stuck with your beer bill. You uh, do that at hotels. I can see a lot of stuff going wrong with these numbering systems. Here. Yeah, and that's, that's your bag number. So when you do get a fish on the boat, they'll ask you what What's number. number. So you, you have duffel or uh, gunny sack number two and number 18. And again, you know, you got a little crappy fish. What's your number? 18. <laughs> <laughs> well, plus knowing that there's a good rental place, it saves you from bringing all the extra stuff that you, you talked about earlier. Yeah, you don't. You know, I'm going to talk a, a little bit uh, when we come back from break. We're going to roll into roll call. Unfortunately, uh, praise God, amen, we only have two soldiers, which is too, too many on roll call today. Absolutely. As opposed to four and six that we've had in the past weeks. But we'll talk about uh, rods and reels and uh, how much junk you need to bring with you to uh, go yellowtail fishing. Albacore and bluefin, that's another deal. I'm Don McDowell. Stay with us. John Colazar. Don Ortiz. We'll be back. Time to get a move on. We will yell with all of our might. Catch us if you can. Woo. Yeah, catch them if you can. Smoke them if you catch them. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions on this? So far, no, other than I'm going to need a, uh, a U-Haul to take everything with me. No, so far you're contained in one bag. Okay. Big bag. Not really. Then it becomes an anchor. If it's too no. big. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I want yeah. my candy bars. <laughs> Can, candy, we're going to talk about candy bars here in a minute. Um, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay. I, I, I think you made it really clear uh, on what's really good to bring and getting people prepped and yeah, really yeah. what not to bring. I mean, that's really important. You don't need to take a lot of stuff in uh well, we'll start down with, uh, you know, if you don't have your own gear, check it out. The, the, there is gear available on the boat. However, I would suggest going to see Rick over at H&M Landing in the tackle shop and get at least two rods, maybe maybe as many as four, depending on what's going on. Because what, what happens is if you foul a rod, you don't have time to sit there and the boat's Spend all the time. pitching and rolling. There's 40 other guys on the boat, and you need to stick that rod in the hole, grab another one. It's already already rigged. Grab a bait, pew, gone off. Because I mean, you, you're you're paying money. To do it. It's like yeah. fishing a tournament. I don't have time. I can't afford the time to sit down and and restring a rod. So that's why we keep whatever you're fishing. Now, the majority of the guys that are fishing. Uh, Yellowtail and the tuners are using live bait. And it's important to understand while the boat's underway, they'll have four to six trolling rods out in rotation. They'll say, okay, number two, number 18, number six, number 12, you guys are up next. Okay. You stand there and watch the trolling rod. When it starts going, you holler, hook up, grab it, and yank it and start cranking. Yeah, and at that time the captain's going to throttle the boat back. He's going to spin the wheel to the left and and put the boat into what is called the slide. Now, if you're not on the trolling rotation, you need to stand at the bait tank and make sure that you have your eye on a real lively anchovy. Because uh, once you get on the boat, you're going to stop at uh, the bait receiver and they're going to take on bait 
uh, 40 guys will probably take on uh, 20, 25, maybe 30 scoops. So the uh, the baits are going to be uh, anchovies. There may be some sardines mixed in uh, or maybe some mackerel, depending. Uh, let, let's just keep it on yellowtail. So the sardine, you want a lively uh, dean with, without a red nose. They start bumping their nose, get a bloody nose, let's say. Uh, is gregarious as these fish are, they're picky. Are we into we're into bait psychology now? You have to be, John. Ab- absolutely, this fishing is a science. Got to get in the mind. And, and I'm telling you, these these guys they want to they'll eat an anchovy with a bloody nose, but they're going to eat something that's lively and looks fine. A lot before faster. they eat that. So what you want to do is you want to stand there with your rod and your hook in your hand. And they holler hook up. You grab a bait, nose hook him. You know, I'll draw you a picture of that. Uh, you come up through the uh, bottom bottom jaw, through the nose, just forward of between the eyes. Okay. And with we're, we're going to call this fishing on a, with a fly line. It's not a fly rod. It's a fly line. That means it doesn't have a sinker. So you flail that out there as best you can. I wouldn't try trying to cast it because uh, they're pretty light. You're going to have some breeze. And what's going to happen when you make the snap on your cast? There goes the bait. Yeah. Seagull's got it, and you're back to the bait tank. And in the meanwhile, everybody else is hooked up. You're going, <laughs> I want to be. Yeah. So what I'm going to suggest is fishing on the slide and what that is you stand in the port corner of the stern with a swim bait a three-quarter ounce lead head with uh, three-dimensional eyes on a five and a half inch body and here's where the bait science comes in if if it's gray light and it's overcast you want to use a purple body with a black back okay okay so if, if you're there and it's ready, somebody hollers hook up, all you do is hit the free spool and drop it. You don't have to throw it, just drop it because the boat's moving, moving and this three-quarter ounce lead head is on the way to the bottom of the abyss. And as the boat's slowing down, these fish, they're school fish, they're moving into the bait. So you're going to be the first guy down there, bam. And when you, you'll have a certain speed. And I don't know what the fall rate is. Don't really care. Don't want to know. But it, it'll it'll be uh, on a steady descent. When it gets picked up by a, a yellowtail, it's going to start moving about 20 miles an hour. You're gonna you're gonna know the difference. And it's a very difficult thing to do. Take it to at least one, two, three, four. Engage and just lean back. back. Just lean back. Let that. He's already going to be hooked, but you need to let him hang himself. And then uh, engage in the fight. One of the other things, uh, which is pretty optional, uh, I like a butt holder. Um, you start getting into 25 <clears throat> or 35 pound fish, they kick your butt. And uh, one of the things you're going to do is you're going to jam the butt of that rod right in your stomach. It's better to have a butt, an a, anchor. Uh, some anchor against, right? Yeah, yeah. butt holder. Right there. And there, Phoenix Fishing's got them. Uh, I still have the old leather ones. I've got some upgraded new ones with the new synthetic stuff. I prefer the leather one because it'll hold a, beer, uh, a Budweiser steel Budweiser can. <laughs> Vertical. There you go. Yeah. I mean, when you, I'm just saying. <clears throat> ain't saying, just saying. Yeah. So, uh, and you give it to the fish when he pumps it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and then as, as, as we do here light penetration into the ocean because the ocean is nothing but a big lake it suffers from the same thing that roosevelt pleasant or any other lake on the planet does um the fish get moody they follow temperature the current's important the wind is important the moon phase is important the sunlight and the penetration is probably most important so a lot like women doesn't let, it? let's say we're gonna, not going to go there today uh let, let's say you get through the morning bite and uh for some reason, you're, you're in sunlight. You want to start upgrading and going to the lighter color, more translucent, uh, uh, soft plastic base. That makes sense. I understand. And, and you want to stop at the anchovy pattern 
which is a white belly, green sides, and a brown back. Okay. Okay. Uh, some of the uh, uh, Max uh, uh, swim bait bodies, some of them have a little orange dot right at the where the gills would be if it were for real fish. That's a good bet. And anything with uh, a white body, so some of the better ones, uh, and, and I, I, I follow this particular line of thought in fishing clear water. We have, you know, like Lake Pleasant. You can see 30 feet in Lake Pleasant sometimes. But a more translucent bait uh, with uh, silver fleck in it, because most everything in the ocean has a color. They have silver scales. Right. To some extent. Okay. And then uh, the blue backs are, are really good. Uh, the uh, black back is good. Nothing's bad. You can go over there and junk fish, but to be more consistent, uh, I'd say with the uh, the anchovy pattern, uh, the purple with the ba- black back or blue. Can I ask you a to, question? Yeah. Seriously. And I mean, I'm I'm not being trying to be funny about this. Anchovies, to me, are something that I've always had on pizza. Well, yeah. What do they look like? They're about in their uh, natural environment. They're about a five, five and a half uh, inch long, cylindrical, torpedo shaped bait fish. That um, oh, they'll be about a half inch in diameter. And again, they've got a uh, white belly, got a little green on the sides, really, and a brown back. Uh, I've got yeah. to look that up on the internet. What an actual anchovy looks like in reality versus the what's delivered from. The and genre. you know, what, depending on what boat you're on, uh, they are fairly tasty. Uh, you can grab one right out of the bait tank, and uh, I would suggest biting the head and the tail off, <laughs> spit that out. And uh, uh, I keep a, uh, I don't remember the brand of it. It's, it's it's a little lemon bottle with the green top with lemon juice. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, a couple shots of that, a little Tabasco. I got a web uh, YouTube on there that uh, I, I didn't I didn't know they were filming it, <laughs> and you did that. I was eating the bait. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, let's just say film at eleven. Yeah, they're they're tasty. I'm guaranteeing you, I will never do that on a boat. No, I won't do that. You can't make me do that. No. It's not part of the deal. Well, there, there is the the Buddha head fisherman. When you catch your first tuna, you stick your hand in the uh, in the gills, right yeah. up on the right side of the gill, make a fist, and you pull the heart out, heart out, wash the heart off, chop it up, and yum. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, it's like eating a bloody nose. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see that film. I, I'll definitely yeah. like to see well, that. Well, you know, with the parasites JK, and, and all the junk mm. that's going around, uh, you know, everybody's got. A disease or a bug or something. Uh, most of the sport boat won't won't let you do that anymore. Right. It's sad. Okay, we got a couple minutes to uh, get roll call down, and uh, we want to start start off today. Roll call for June 29th as Army Sergeant Corey E. Carver died June 23rd, 2013, serving during and during uh, Freedom. 26 years old. Tom Sham, Maine, assigned to 1st Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment, 4th Brigade Combat Team out of Fort, Tucky, uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He died in uh, Zamat, Afghanistan, of wounds caused by an improvised explosive device. And on that note, we're seeing an awful lot of uh, soldiers out of uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, uh, giving it up. John? Army Specialist Javier Sanchez, Jr., Died June 23, 2013, serving during Operation Enduring Freedom. He was 28 years old of Greenfield, California. Assigned to the Special Troops Battalion, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 10th Mountain Division out of Fort Drum, New York. He died June the 23rd in San Rauza, Afghanistan, of wounds caused by an improvised explosive device. As always, uh, we we give our hearts, prayers, and our thoughts uh, to the family, the soldiers. Uh, they'll be remembered as fathers and sons and uncles and all those things. Uh, last night in Mesa, we looked at 145 Arizona soldiers that's given it up since 2001. I'm Don McDowell. Think about that. Salute, soldier. We'll be back. Come on, brother, I'm taking you home. Come on, brother, I'm taking you home. Come on, brother, I'm taking you home. It's time for Shake, Rattle, and
Control, a show for the serious fishermen, as well as the novice looking for tips from the pros. Shake, Rattle, and Troll is brought to you by Bill Luke Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Now, here's your host, saltwater fisherman and tournament pro, Don McDowell. Yeah, man. Hey, I'm Don McDowell. We're uh, tuna fishing today, yellowtail. Uh, we're going to talk about Alcor bluefin, uh, big eye, uh, and, and so on as we uh, go through the show. But we've been talking about uh, gear, personal gear bags and uh, getting your uh, equipment over at uh, H&M Landing at the uh, tackle rental sh- shop. And uh, Rick is our go-to guy over there been there forever he is a wealth of knowledge and if you have any questions before you make your reservation or while you're making your reservation you can call rick at 619-222-1144 memorize the number you're going to name it ricky what are you doing man oh man just watching all those boats come in with their yellowtail i'll Pretty tell you in half fishing it's good what what's uh coming in today uh well we had ocean odyssey come in we had uh the Sea Adventure 80, the Top Gun, all day and a half boats today. A couple of them are leaving on three and a half today. Nice. Good yellowtail fishing, but the uh, bluefin are, have moved down a little bit. They had a south current blowing through, so those fish uh, moved down about 180, 200 miles. But wow. uh, both, both that went down there were really whacking them. I know the Spirit Adventure just came back uh, a couple of days ago. They had 200 of those uh Nice bluefin up to wow. about 60 pounds. Oh, oh really oh. nice fish. A couple, the red rooster came in yesterday and they had, uh, quite a few of those bluefin. They had one over 130, one of 140. Nice wow. big fish. And those fish, unfortunately for the two guys catching them, he ate 40 pounds, so they were on those fish for a couple hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those, Sore those bluefin arms. are, t- bluefin are tougher than you think. Well, but, uh, we've, today we've been talking a little bit about, uh, personal gear and, and you know, what to take, more importantly, what not to take. And, and uh, for the guys who don't have gear, what are you recommending? What are you going to put in their hand uh, from the tackle shop there for, let's say, yellowtail? Well, yellowtail fishing, there's a couple different ways to go. It depends on your fishing experience. If you're not real experienced saltwater fishing, stick with the bait. Get yourself some number two, some number two out hooks. Right now there's a lot of anchovy around as well as sardines, so a smaller hook comes in handy. A little bit of fluorocarbon. Uh, 30, 40 pound fluorocarbon. And, uh. That's for your leader. We'll talk about that. Okay. Right. Okay. And, uh, use that for a little leader on your 20 or 30 pound outfit, or you can rent gear. You know, we have top quality gear, including Abbott reels that we rent. Abbott two speeds for those bigger fish make your life a lot easier. Good stuff. If you have, if you have your own gear, make sure you have fresh line. Make sure it hasn't been sitting in the garage without, uh, being worked on for four, a couple of years. Make sure your drags are smooth. That's critical. If your gear doesn't work right, get it in early before your trip, not the day of your trip. Hang on one second. Uh, JK, were you in drag last night? Uh, Don't go there. No, I was not. Okay, thank you. Moving back along. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, just make sure your gear is ready. Uh, If you come down early enough, we can put fresh line on for you. As far as rebuilding your reels, get that done ahead of time. Yeah, as we've got a good shop over here, Phoenix Fish and Supply, uh, Gowdy and the boys, uh, they know how to do it, been doing it forever. Great, yeah. You can't overemphasize your gear working right. You don't want to pay your money for a trip and go out there and have stuff breaking down. Well, you know, not everybody's, you know, got a truck to, you know, haul the 42 uh, rods and reels that uh, I like to bring. So, uh, you <laughs> well, know, just go I, with Don, everybody, and borrow his stuff. The, yeah, that's what I've lined up already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've already. I'm going to rip that. my stuff from him. <laughs> yeah, we've had that discussion. Uh, we're just rolling into, uh, we've talked a little bit about fishing. Uh, the uh, anchovies on a fly line. Talked a little bit about soft plastic uh, swim bait bodies on the slide. Uh, I'm kind of rolling into uh, fish of the candy bars. Uh, you know, it's not Snickers or Mars bars. Uh, paydays were good. Yeah. But uh, uh, going into fishing the uh, irons uh, uh, jigs for yellowtail. Okay. And, Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to suggest for yellowtail either a blue and white pattern or blue and silver. Any other thoughts on uh, yellowtail? Well, I'll tell you, if you're, if you're fishing offshore for yellowtail, you don't really need the surface jigs like you do when you're fishing the islands. Um, exactly. Just okay. get yourself some 6X Juniors, Sumo 5s, heavy, heavy jigs. Blue and chrome, blue and white are pretty much the standard. They work well for everybody. You don't have to cast them far, just flip them away from the boat. Um, and let them sink for a while. There's a sumo that he's talking yeah. about. Uh-huh. 
let them sing for a while, and then, then just crank them up as fast as you can turn a handle, and you'll get stopped. One okay, the, the uh, about that. let me ask you this. The uh, reels that you're uh, renting out, what's your uh, gear ratio, or uh, do I have an option? Well, it, if you rent the Abbots, they have a 6-3. They have a 6-to-1 high gear ratio and a 3-to-1 low gear ratio. Nice. The uh, Shimano's we... Uh, rent have a five to one gear ratio. One thing you got to remember, though, all these jigs were designed thirty, forty years ago, and the fast reel then was a four to one gear ratio. So they they'll swim just fine on almost any reel you have. So don't don't feel intimidated that you have to have a six to one gear ratio to make the, to catch. Well, it. I would say at, at least a five one or a five three to one. You know, like I said, man, tons of these fishermen caught on four to one throughout the years. Okay. Well, but so it doesn't really have to be going fast. You just have to keep it moving because those fish are going to think it's especially the more people are doing it on the boat, the better it works for yo-yo fishing because it looks like a whole school of fish is trying to escape and it turns those uh, predators on. Bam. And it's, another nice thing about fishing that yo-yo jig is a lot of times you'll have the smaller fish up near the surface and down below you'll get bluefin swimming underneath them. Uh, most of the opa are caught that way. I don't know if any of you guys, too many of you know what an opa is, but it's like a Big old uh, orange sunfish weighs anywhere from 60 to 150 pounds. Delicious eating, but most of those are caught under kelp patties mm-hmm. when a guy sinks the jig way out there, sinks it way down and cranks it up. Okay. Um, are, are the, uh, is there a lot of patties this year? That's pretty much what they're fishing on. Okay. You know, plenty of patties, just finding them with the right, right guys on them. And, but fishing has been pretty good, down about 80 miles. Like I said, we had a south current the last few days, and that pushed fish back a little bit. But, yeah, uh, it'll turn around. They're still catching 50s and 60s. It'll turn around. Yeah, yeah I good. see uh, the chief had a day and a half trip, and uh, 21 anglers, 46 yellowtail. And one bluefin, yeah. And, a, and one bluefin. Yep, yeah, that's uh, that's not, not a bad average. No, not bad at all. You know, and just like anything else, the guys that kind of understand what's going on catch more fish than the guys that don't. So... Well, you know, if you, if you pay attention, listen to Don and do what he suggests, you'll end up catching more fish. Well, let me get your thoughts on uh, follow your line doing the tuna shuffle. Oh yeah, that's critical. It's that's critical, critical, and you know what? Most people don't get it. Well, it takes a while. You know, most guys learn to fish from a shore, from a pier, and they cast out and they sit there and they wait for things to happen. Well, you got to remember, a boat's moving all the time. Current's going one way, wind's blowing another way, and you want to keep your line as straight out in front of you as you can and work with the people around you. You get a fish, it's going to go where it wants, and if you don't stay in front of that fish, it's going to pick up every line around the boat, and these guys are getting bit too, and you're going to end up with a ball of lines all together in the corner. And John, and to answer your mess. John had a question, uh, do you go over or under? You listen to your deckhand. There's going to be a deckhand glued to you like a uh, fly on honey. Right, and in a good bite, if not, if you're not sure what it is, bring your two tips close together, and you'll be able to see where the line is. If it's exactly. over, go over. It's under, go under. But be, feel free to move. If you know, Don't feel like you're locked into any certain spot. If you move, you'll catch more fish. If you stay put, you'll get more tangles and be more frustrated. Yeah. And everyone around you will be more frustrated. Well, and then tell the guy whichever way you're going. You know, tell coming him, left, I'm, coming I'm, right. I'm, yeah, I'm, let yeah, him know you're I'm, coming. I'm going over, over I'm going under, whatever yeah, it is. Especially when you're going over the top because... You know, you end up hitting people in the head with the rods and stuff, and that gets people upset. They stand up at the wrong time. Well, sometimes it's, you know, let's just say sometimes full contact moving left or right is, because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I try to be polite. Don't want any yeah. issues on deck, but I want to tell him one time, hey, I'm coming under. I'm coming under. Yep. There may be yep. an elbow or you gotta a rod, go, but, you gotta go. but, uh, the thing but I'm, is, I'm moving. The nice thing about it. Almost all these boats that I've been on, all the boats down here, have a little seminar in the beginning of the day and explain that to everybody. Not everybody listens, but they explain, hey, when we're getting fish, you have to keep moving all the time. If you don't keep moving, you're going to get entangled and make everybody mad. That was but, my question, if they're uh, doing a little seminar or something before they get all these yeah. guys on the boat. Yeah, I, they I, do. Because they want you to catch fish and more. they want you to have a good time. Yeah, they want it to be a great experience. Well, exactly. and, and the boats uh, today uh, are marketing oriented. Right, it's is much it, more customer service than it used to be. It is, and you need to listen to your deckhand. Yep, you're going to have a deckhand right there going, John, quit that. 
Or do this, do that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you need to do it. So. Sounds like one of my ex-wives. Ricky, God bless you, man. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you here uh, pretty quick. And, uh, hey, just, just, a, just a little side note, that inshore uh, sand bass is biting real good. So anybody, any family coming out from Arizona, it's a great the, time to get the kids out fishing. In the bay. Yes. Okay, right, Rick, guys, thanks very much. HMLanding.com. Check it out. 619-222-1144. We're going to flip into breaks. Thanks to our sponsor. When we come back, we'll explain that look on your face. We'll be back. That's not possible. <laughs> All righty, we're back. Uh, you have a puzzled look on your face, J.K. You know, anytime it's in an environment that I've had absolutely zero experience on, and the more information that's given, the more confusion becomes. And, and I was just telling Don Ortiz, I said, you know what? I'm going to go over there with Don. He's going to catch five fish. I'm going to foul 40 other people's lines because I'm going to go over, moving left instead, and I'll go under to the right. I'll foul hook everybody's lines up. They're going to toss me into the water, and I'll never come back. No. You know, that's, uh, that's happened in the past. But, you know, the the here's what's happened. Back when I, I first started uh, ocean fishing back in the 70s, and I've got over 900 days on the salt water. Some of it's in Mexico. Some of it's on the Atlantic seaboard. But back in the day, they didn't give a damn about marketing. They didn't care whether you caught a fish. They didn't care about the quality of the food. The deckhands were usually uh, hiding from the law. I mean, it was it, it was yeah, good. Sure. It was a good place to go. I mean, if you wanted to hide, you get on Great a boat gig. and go out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Who's gonna know? Who's gonna find but you today? Today, the uh, the deckhands are trained. Uh, let's take. Uh, uh, Chuck Taft, as an example, is like fourth generation uh, tuna fisherman. He's old school, and he understands that if if you if you guys don't go over there and catch fish, you're not coming back. Bottom line, True. you That's go on a his boat experience. and you have a crappy experience. You got a uh, a, a turd head deckhand that doesn't know what he's doing, and you don't catch fish. You're going to go on somebody else's boat, and you're going to tell your friends, you know, that that guy sucks. Well, here, here's the deal. The the deckhands uh, are trained. I mean, they, they train them, and they fish, 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 because if there's not any fish being caught, they're fishing. Yeah. They're out there because they're, they're fishermen. And most of them, they have a goal. They want to be a first mate, second mate. Ultimately, they want their own skipper's, sure. uh, skipper's license. So it, it, it's a good bet. And, uh, you know, there's uh, boats that have reputation, tafts got an awesome reputation and uh the producer and you look at hmlanding.com every one of those boats over there is uh tried and proven you know the top gun 80 the shogun uh next door well that's why i was glad that rick said uh you know they do a seminar before everybody gets out so they do i, I think that's great it, it lets you know the protocol beforehand exactly the the other thing that's important uh, and, and i'm glad you brought that back up because I, I started talking about it uh taking your own pfd in into mexico the safety briefing on the on the vessel is paramount stuff happens not often but it does happen if um uh, they go over where the PFDs are, where the lifeboat is, what the fire drill, what you're going to hear if they bump into a rock or start taking, you know, wh- Any wh- number whatever the right. case is. You need to know that because this is this is no place to be messing around or grandstanding to being a show off. Yeah, oh, yeah, I got it. I'm going here and drink a beer. No. <laughs> Get back in there, sit down, shut up, and listen to what the man's telling you. And this, this is an environment that uh, is safe. And I don't want to overplay, but you know, stuff happens. I've had these in my leg, these these treble hooks. I've got I've got scars all over myself. Things that I didn't. A lot of them I've done to myself, but not on not on uh, on the boat. It's somebody does something to you. You get four or five guys out of forty that are throwing these irons and yeah. these jigs. You you've got to be careful you're launching a mortar with three great oh, yeah. big hooks on it that's that's enormous and, compared to and, stuff I'm used and to the bait fishermen are not going to be conscious of what you're doing because they, they've got their head over the rail looking in the water trying to follow their line and here you over here trying to get this out away yards. from the boat away from the other lines 
and uh, slinging iron out there or or swim bait. So you you have to be really cognizant of your environment, a 360 degree. I'm going to go this way, so you're looking in front of you. You need to know who's coming left, who's coming right, and more importantly, who's behind you because you're going to do a couple of bounces, gone, and make your launch or cast. But these things actually sound like mortar rounds leaving. I like that. Yeah. Cutting through the wind. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And these colors I brought for you to look at today, uh, the the white's a good bet. Um, The blue and white's predominant. The blue and white, and I like it. I don't have that in the box. But I've got a blue and silver with the white on it, which you can't buy that, but you can take it home, put it in the garage, and airbrush the white on it with uh, silver here on the flat surface on the back so it flashes. Mm -hmm. Uh, This green and and a black one emulates a uh, mackerel, which sometimes these fish get really really fussy. And if they're not eating bait, they're not eating swim baits, and, and I'm talking the tuna families, usually, right. usually the bluefin, uh, albacore are just overly fussy. And uh, taking these right up on the bow of the boat and, and chucking them off and uh, giving them about a, about a 60 countdown, and then, I mean, rip it back to the boat is a good bet. But really? uh, Yeah. But, again, the boat's uh, obviously moving forward unless it's uh, in a slide or a drift. And, and Rick's right. The boat's moving. You've Wind's got a, going one way, current's going the other way, and the boat's going the third. And you, you could have a storm coming at you. I mean, there's so many different things that can happen out there, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. It changed don't, the elements. Don't, don't say storm, perfect storm. Don't do that to me. Yeah, no no yeah, perfect we, storms. We, we don't even want to talk about that. That's uh, If you get a chance to watch the movie, wa- 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 you need to watch this because it's like watching Forrest Gump. On the outset, Forrest Gump, it took me 10 years to sit down and get past the first 10 minutes of it. But that's a deep psychological movie, and there's four or five, maybe six different little stories within the overall. Mm-hmm. Right. Perfect Storm's the same way. You'll get a taste of the personal relationships that go on with, with uh, saltwater fishermen, um, between them and their wives and their girlfriends, being gone and coming in and not having anybody meet you at the dock after you've been out for 10, 12, 14 days. Uh, it's it's kind of lonesome as opposed to having somebody going, Oh, Johnny's back in town. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you're you're the last guy off the boat. Everybody's got somebody to greet him except you. What do you do? And you go to the room cage and have a beer, right? And then move on. But it, it's a wonderful story. Uh, it, it's a tragedy. It, it's true. It happens. I at one point had a a list run, kind of like we do do the soldiers. We've lost 195 total soldiers deployed out of Arizona uh, at this point. But I, I used to keep a running total of uh, Gloucester fishermen lost at sea. The first thing I do, and, and you'll you'll enjoy this, uh, go to the Tunamans Memorial over on Shelter Island to see whose name was added on the list from the previous last year. year. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it. Uh, yeah, you know, stuff happens everywhere. Sure, but you you just need to be a be on your game and, and be aware. One of the other things, John, uh, that's important is take a small set of binoculars, not big and bulky. There are so many things to look at. You really? Can, yeah. I thought well, we were out in the middle of nowhere and you all you was water. There's things out there called whales that are really oh, yeah. cool. You know, whales, you'll see whales, the big uh, Pacific sunfish. They're big as a garage Did you door. see that big uh, 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 pod of uh, dolphins that they had, like something like 580 dolphins? It was just shot uh, the day before yesterday. They no. had it on. They, and the guys were out there. They said they... They've never seen that big of a school of, uh, of wow. dolphins together before. Yeah, breaking the water. You'll see those. You'll see feeding frenzies. Uh, you'll encounter sharks, um, especially if you get on an extended uh, fish bite. Uh, the sharks know it. They start chumming around. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. You'll become your best new friend. Yeah, you'll you'll wind up with a nice yellowtail head that'll make soup. Oh uh, no! Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, pretty That would get me very angry. Now, what, one of the other things uh, I, I asked Rick. fought him for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, about the uh, patties. It, it's kind of like what we do, uh, you know, on the land hunting. We like to jump water holes, let's right. say. 
it's the same concept. You see a patty, let the skipper know. He'll 99% of the time, he He'll won't see have it first. seen it because yeah. he's up higher. But you want to be uh, at the front of the boat as they go by the patty. Mm-hmm. Be the first guy in line. So everybody's going to be gathered around the fantail. Go, up, excuse me, pew, get up to the bow of the boat because the bow of the boat's going to get there first. Right. And you throw ahead of that patty so that your bait, whether it be uh, one of these guys, an iron, a candy bar, a uh, phallus, a uh, sumo, whatever it is, or I really prefer the swim baits at, at this point, and throw that uh, right in the middle of the patty so that it goes down under the patty. And as the boat goes by the patty, the patty's not moving. It's consistent. Nope. So your bait has will, will be in the target range or the water column right under that longer than the other guys and uh, odds are if you're you, that first cast first fish i have a feeling that john's going to do good out there it's I, it's good stuff i, I do i i look forward to seeing some of the footage i'm, I'm sure you'll be taking there some. will be no films no no <laughs> i'm can, done being filmed you can go to the shake rattle and troll website we've got a lot of those videos up there we'll get this posted uh the gear bag uh some of the other nuances i, I we can add to this but, uh, yeah, there's there's some stuff on there, including yours truly eating bait that needs to come down. I've got it. There's down. even John doing the uh, the Payson Mountain High games on there, too. No, that's gone. That's Is been that removed. Gone? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it better stay gone, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we flip into a break, any more questions that you have that we can? Oh, I know. Uh, how much does it cost to do this? Yeah, trip? that was one thing. Uh, it fluctuates depending on what you do. If you're going to rent gear, right? Uh, it's 15, 18, yeah, 15, 18 bucks a day. I thought we were looking at about 150 for a half, for a three quarter day. Well, the ticket price is going to be in there, but your, uh, rod and reel rental. What do you suggest, uh, amount of cash to take with you? Stuff like that. That's a fair question. You need to cover your lunch meal, uh, your lunch and your meal ticket and your, your beverages. And uh, I, I'd take a hundred bucks. There you go for a day, because cool. you want you want to tip the deck hands. Yeah, that well, makes sense. And there's always a big fish pot, and you need I to. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, we got to flip into a break. We'll cover that when I uh, come back. I'm Don McDowell with these Donald guys. T. Those Sean guys. Colas are Mr. President, sir. Drive a truck and rope and ride. All righty, we're back. Uh, right at home we'll get into uh, some more of this stuff. Uh, but right now, we we need to change gears and go to our master rod builder, James Guggenauer, Rim Country Custom Rod in downtown Payson, where the weather is always nice. James, good morning. Good morning, Brother Don. Some great music Jennifer is playing there this morning. Good yes. to have Jennifer back in the camp. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So what's happening up at the Mother Lake? What do you got on your report today? Well, we got uh, three pieces of news before we get to the report. The first is that we lost a great man, an angler and a hunter this past week. Dave Batchett of Pono Basin uh, passed away from cancer. He's been oh, struggling with that for my... a couple of years. I hadn't and, heard that. Yeah, I, I know you know him. Everybody calls him Big Dave in, yep. in Pono Basin. But the good news is that we know if there's a, a bass lake in heaven that Dave's out there right now with a plastic worm fishing away. So, yeah, buddy. Uh, tough lot there. But on a good note, uh, Clifford Perch from Payson ended up in eighth place in the Bassmaster Elite Series on the Mississippi River last week. So a good top ten finish for Clifford. He pretty consistently does that. And fishing against the top hundred anglers in the world, uh, that's a pretty good step for him. And then uh, Matt Shore and Jimmy Johnson uh, won a ABA tournament on Apache Lake last weekend. Total weight, check this out, 21.45 pounds wow. for five fish. So oh. they had next night Man. out there. Yeah, who had the front of the boat? Uh, I have to say that Matt did. <laughs> <laughs> He's <Right> bigger. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I know Johnny Johnson. I love that guy. He'd be over there throwing white spinner baits in the tires. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
you know, but Matt, as, as he always does, you know, he gets up there and says, I couldn't have a better co-angler in the back of my boat than a TV host <laughs> uh, <laughs> to, uh, to fish with. So they did pretty well. Congratulations to them. In Roosevelt Lake, the water level dropped another 1% this past week. It's down to 49% full. Oops. And uh, in addition, we've been watching this big drop-off in the flow of the Tarno Creek. Well, this past week, it stopped flowing altogether now. So that happens in the summer. This is a little earlier than usual, but uh, no flow in the in the Tarno. The salt is still flowing at about 60% of its normal rate for this time of year. So slowing that water down, they're taking more water out for the valley, and the result of that is that the lake level drops uh, 1% to 2% each week now. And we'll probably see that for the next uh, month, month and a half. Yeah. What Any predictions on uh, how far down the lake's going to go? Has anybody talked to SRP? Um, the, well, we just go by history. If you uh, go back the last couple of years, at the end of the summer, we're down around 30%. Wow. So, uh, if they if they follow what they've typically done, uh, that's what they do. Now, that's all you know predicated on the monsoons. If we get some good monsoon rains in here, it can make a difference in a hurry in that lake. So, yeah. Wow. so we're hoping for that. The water temperature is uh, continues to increase. We're still staying in the low 80s in the mornings to the mid to high 80s in the afternoon. The good news is uh, from all after all the storms and everything that we had a month or so ago, the water is cleared up on the whole lake now. We're just calling it crystal clear. Most everywhere you go, you can see down 10, 15 feet now. So nice. Bass fishing was called fair to good this past week. Success has reported on Texas rigs, drop shots, and Carolina rigs, and baits range from Cinco's to 10-inch ribbon tail worms, 6-inch curly tail worms, and lizards. And just about everybody I talked to this week, Don, they're fishing the main lake points, casting up in the shallows and bringing their baits down the main lake point into deeper water, and they're going 25 to 30 feet down. Wow. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now a lot of a lot of guys are switching from daytime to evening. They're getting on the water about four or five o'clock in the afternoon and fishing till midnight. So we we remind everybody that uh, you know we're not far from the monsoon storms up here. So we need to start checking the weather. In fact, here in uh, Payson, what was it yesterday? Day before yesterday, boy, there were some big cracks of thunder up here. Didn't get any rain, but but it's a good warning that uh, the it's monsters coming. are not far behind. Well, uh, J.K. and I were uh, traveling through your fair city uh, Friday, and mm-hmm. uh, I was looking at stuff. Uh, that lighting up there was uh, very violent. It, it's going right straight down to Mother Earth. And uh, what do we see, two fires between yeah, on the way. Payson and Springville? Springville, yeah. Yeah. It def- definitely is dry. There's even when you drive up here, you'll see that uh, there's signs on the side of the road that talk, remind everybody of no fires or no smoking or anything because it's it's dry. No, no target doubt. shooting, no nothing. Right, right, right. Hey, now the um, nighttime fishing for crappie. Uh, this past week we had the full moon. In fact, we had the super moon. And uh, crappie fishermen reported fair to good uh, crappie bite. Everybody's using a live minnow just up two feet below a bobber. So if you're going out crappie fishing, uh, you know, buy some minnows, stop in at the tackle box and tunnel basin and get them. And uh, that's what everybody's fishing with. Uh, mostly around the marina tires. You know, I, don't, I don't know why they school around those, those tires, but uh, at nighttime... They seem to, to go in there. <laughs> the Rim Lakes are producing some great fishing trips. Uh, the stock trout are plentiful. And once again this week, you know, whatever your favorite trout bore is, it's going to work. I got reports of Super Dupers, Z-Rays, crankbaits, and dry flies were all reported successful. Baker's dozen, you can take anything you want up there now, can't you, including power bait as well. Oh, yeah, power baits, worms. You see lots of people on the shorelines uh, fishing uh, with those baits. So it's uh, just fun time to be up there, and it's great that they stock it. You know, the elevation up there is over 8,000 feet. So you actually need a, a light jacket or a sweatshirt in the mornings, if you can believe that. 
that's just that's so fun different. Fun fishing times. Yeah, it's true. Early in the mornings, it's wonderful up there. Yeah. One more reminder is for people coming up for the 4th of July holiday, you know, the lakes are going to be crowded. We're reminding everybody to use extra caution and and be calm, be relaxed. Don't worry, the traffic's going to subside. And uh, we wish everybody a great Independence Day from here in Payson. Now, are you guys doing a uh, fireworks display? Payson is doing a fireworks display, okay. and uh, as usual, we'll be sitting in our back deck up here watching the fireworks display with some friends. So, uh, <laughs> on up, Don. JK? Yeah. Up. yeah I, if, I, if I'm going anywhere, it's going to be the Oxbo. <laughs> well, you, you won't see the Payson fireworks from there, but you might see some. Yeah, I'll right. see fireworks, my own personal variety. Okay, a uh, couple quick questions, James. What are you recommending, uh, rod uh, strength tip and uh, backbone for uh, yellowtail? Let's say a 25-pound yellowtail. Well, I've been listening to your conversation. <laughs> I'm, I'm salivating as you go through the baits and the I'm colors. I'm telling you. But, uh, yeah, you'd, you'd probably need, what, a 30-class uh, rod for that in Salt River or uh, Salt Water? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd go stiff because, as you know, those things are going to stalemate you. I can remember more than one trip that you're just, you know, the fish won't move and you can't move it. So you need plenty of rod to be able to just hold that fish right there. Do you build a lot of uh, saltwater rods yourself? Um, I won't say that I build a lot of them, but uh, every now and then I get an order for saltwater rods. I love building them because... Um, you know, you all the whole time you're building it, you're just thinking about how this rod's going to be used. Yeah, boy. And, uh, you know, it's it's fun. It's just absolutely fun to build them, and the customers that order those are just like the bass fishermen that order rods. They know exactly what they want, and and you can build it just to their specifications. So I yeah. absolutely enjoy that part of it. All righty, good stuff. Uh, well, I want to uh, wish you the rest of. Uh, a good day today, and uh, you guys be safe uh, moving into your uh, 4th of July celebration. Yeah, keep everybody tied down up there, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely give it a shot. Thanks, Don. All right, James Guggenauer, check him out, rimcountrycustomrods.com. Uh, he does build uh, one hell of a rod and uh, certainly uh, more capable on the uh, saltwater end. What, what we'll end up taking over there, John, is probably uh, about six rods. Uh, in, in, including my uh, trolling rod, um, I've got that set up. I've, you know, I've got the gear ratio that I want, the the length, uh, roller guides, roller guides, roller guides. Yeah, I don't want to be messing around on a on a jig fish. So. That makes sense. Yeah, thank all, you, Jennifer. All good stuff. So, anyway, having uh, said that, we're gonna come back and go through uh, a couple more announcements real quick. Get this thing wrapped up and. Uh, Go lock myself in the somebody's walk-in cooler today. I'm yeah. Don McDowell. We'll be right back. Just kidding. Oh, oh, right. I all was right, just pre- singing. Pre- pretty good. All right. That, th- thank you, John. Uh, okay. Uh, 3rd of July, Lake Pleasant, uh, fireworks. Uh, Their 4th of July celebration. On the 3rd. Yes. Uh, good stuff. Uh, check out the uh, marina. It is under new... Uh, management uh big changes down there still a, a gorgeous place to go on the lake uh uh that kicks off about 5 p.m in the evening fireworks will go off uh about dark 30 around 9 nine fifteen, something like that but, probably uh, yeah good stuff and then uh well i want to invite everybody out to the uh, scottsdale princess uh for their third annual freedom festival a lot of stuff going on they've got specials on uh what they call family staycations, uh, uh, special pricing for the uh, casitas, the rooms. Uh, come out and enjoy the uh, fireworks, uh, the 4th, 5th, and 6th. Uh, so some stuff scheduled for the 7th, but uh, that's kind of wind-down day. Uh, brunches and lunches and uh, all kinds of great stuff. They have uh, five uh, sparkling pools, 200-foot water slide. John, they've got a zip line. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's easy. 
The, I, oh yeah, those are fun. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying. You ain't saying, you know? just saying. Zip. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they have an after dark techno water slide with fog, disco lights, uh, live DJ. Uh, you can get pampered at the spa. Taking around. I don't want around. to be pampered at the spa. That's not like you, J.K. <laughs> Ooh, he, come on, this is you can't let this stuff go on air, Don. Uh, okay, look, I'm just saying, anybody that has a Prius with camo seats, uh, you, you know, it's I'm, an oxymoron. Come yeah, on, exactly. Yeah. Go My it. flying wedge, which you couldn't catch up to. I couldn't, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, but that doesn't need to be on there either. Uh, they've got uh, dive in, dive in movies. You can watch movies from the pool. Are you serious? Yeah. I, 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 he said dive in movies, and I thought, I am not, not going not, underwater not, to watch not. anything. <laughs> That's a long time to hold your breath. Yeah. Yeah, there's daily uh, poolside uh, <laughs> games for the for the children. Uh, like I said, we've got lagoon fishing. And I think this is a national first. We actually have the uh, Shake, Rattle, and Troll, National Guard, Billet, Crush, Jeep, Dodge, Daiichi, Skippy Fish, Fast Track, Bass Boat, in the lagoon. And you're going to roll it over, right? Are I'm not going to roll over, but I'll tell you what, I'm starting the big motor. That's what I, I want to be there for that. Yeah, baby. There you go. Yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll uh, <laughs> do the launch. Oh, well, you know, I'm relatively uh, reserved at this particular point in my life. I'm not going to go. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do a comeback on that? <laughs> no. No. Uh-uh. Uh, I, I'm going to have to start the big motor to get it on and off the trailer. Other than that, uh, I want to see him do a rooster tail right in the middle of the lagoon. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. That'd be Let's great. say uh, they've got sports courts, uh, trail blazers, family adventure center, and they have a fun team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can I join the fun team? Yeah. Well, some of the stuff I mean, I mean and you can go to their website and uh, check it out. It's uh, scottsdaleprincess.com. Um, take advantage of the seasonal uh, summer specials and, and all the stuff's going on there. And what we'll, we'll get started, uh, you know, the schedule's pretty much the same. We've got, uh, wow, uh, patriotic demonstrations. There's an Army boot cl- camp class. There are PT uh, exercises every morning. Uh, water survival demonstration. We've got a couple water survival of, demonstration. There you go. Well, this is cool because you, 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 John, uh, can go in the water and get uh, suited up with battle rattle and uh, uh, PFD and do the whole thing. Uh, we've got a couple of parachute guys from the Golden Knights coming in. We've got a military uh, meet and greet at the uh, kids club. Uh, Star Spangled Dining, all American uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, dinner buffets. Uh, concert treats uh, at the lagoon, on the lawn, snow cones, cash bars, the fishing tournament. Uh, again, I'll be doing 4th, uh, 5th, and 6th uh, seminars from the bow of the boat. Uh, we'll engage in, uh, that's from uh, 8 to 9, and then uh, 9 to noon is our fishing derby. Uh, we've got the Arizona BFN out there uh, at Sportsman's Warehouse helping the kids uh, in the folks fish. And it's uh, just going to be an awesome time. What's Sounds the cost like for it. that for the day? Uh, it depends on what you're going to do. Oh, that's cool. So uh, they do have uh, room and uh, casita specials, uh, special pricing on the meals. And uh, I've been out there a couple of nat- uh, times now on, on the, trying to figure out all the logistics. And uh, we're bringing in milit- old uh, vintage military equipment. And um, the folks are just extremely accommodating out there. Good. You know, and I think it's an over, it's overall beautiful spot. destination for indigenous personnel. And don't forget, we'll be at Luke Air Force Base. I was coming to that. That's I right. got it on my list yeah. right here. The Dean of Preston <laughs> Band. Oh, that's a big list. Did you see that list? I did. Man. That's massive. Don, I would have never been at that? the end of that. How do you do all that? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be out there, the Dina Preston Band. Check us out also on our website, dinapreston.com. And, of course, like us on Facebook. And for those that are listening today, if you're out there and you post a, a like to the Dina Preston Band, I'll send you one of our songs. Free. Nice. Free. So it's nice you get a new song to listen to in your in your new iPod or your I, yeah, your Nook. Exactly. Oh, what? Jeez. That okay. way you can take it on that tuna Tuna boat with you. 
and sing Halfway from Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Which is where you are right now. Exactly yeah. where you'll be. <laughs> you have anything to add? I want to thank uh, Safeguard Business Systems uh, for our uh, bagels this morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. You know, Delicious. it was refreshing to come back to discussing fishing versus some of the things that we've been involved with. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, if you want to follow the wolf issue, we have uh, Wolf Files, W-O-O-F. It's not a uh, typographic error. It's wolves. It's woofy. Uh, we've got a lot of information up there, and we did engage uh, with the Apache County Predator Symposium, and all that will be up on the website uh, Monday. A road trip from hell. Yeah, it was. A long day. Um, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Uh, a lot of stuff going on on that. Uh, Stay hydrated. On the wolf issue? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I just I want to concentrate totally on fishing now. We're just okay. going to do that. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Well, check out the website. We've got uh, shakerattleandtroll.com. Uh, the store is up, not quite fully functional, but uh, you can see uh, what we're offering for bad Bad shad T-shirts, bad wolf T-shirts, free-range bacon. Smoke them if you got them. Hats, visors, all that What's stuff. in your backpack? Jack's Lynx. That's right. Yeah. Jack's you, Lynx. You think I'm messing with Sasquatch? Yeah. Yeah. I messed with Sasquatch. <laughs> I hugged him. Right at the end of the run, I And there's him. a film to prove it. Yes, there is. And damn, he's ugly. You know, there's another... Uh, I. Discovery Channel. I don't know where they find these guys. Mountain monsters. They've got a bunch of hillbillies. God love them. I'm not picking on them. They're hillbillies. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a, it's an indigenous in, species. To in, Kentucky in the and Tennessee mountains. Yeah, I know. Chasing wolf dogs, wolf man, devil dog, and I mean these guys. It's scary in America. Truly. I know. Who's yeah. allowed to have guns? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Worse, who's allowed to vote? <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know that they have both. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yeah, they do. Anyway, they get that ballot. <laughs> yeah, pretty interesting. So, anyway, if you have any questions uh, on destinations, uh, want to know anything on fishing tips, or uh, want to be a guest on Shake, Rattle, and Troll, you go to the website. Uh, you can uh, navigate down through there, and uh, we'll be glad to engage you and have you on. Uh, wh- what are your plans for the 4th? You know, I'm going to watch you. I'm going to learn how to bass fish from the big bass daddy himself. Right. I'm going to go out there to the Scottsdale Princess, and I'm going to watch and learn. What are you going to use for bait? Whoever I can find. Worms and a bobber. No, no, no. I'm actually going to do topwater lures. If you don't, really? Yeah. Mm. Early. I'm going to go out there at 4.30 in the morning before Ooh. anybody else. I'm going to clean out the lake. I'm going to have them all strung out there. I think we need to put an off limits on the lagoon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. No, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a Texas rig. Uh, we're gonna do uh, stuff that's pertinent to that. We have to do a little top water. Always mm-hmm. interesting to see what pops up out of the lagoon. And uh, I'm thinking probably a Texas rig, uh, soft plastic worm, uh, maybe a Carolina rig with uh, Larry the Lizard tied on. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, and no. Uh, Back to basics. Uh, be a lot of kids out there warming the bobber. Uh, Daiichi's sending in, in some hooks. We're supposed to have some soft plastic samples from uh, Lake Fork Tackle. I'll follow up. Ooh, cool. With uh, Mr. Ronnie Parker from Lake Fork Tackle in Texas. Uh, see what he's got to uh, add to the to the mix. I don't know if swim baits. Uh, there's so many bluegills in there. I don't know if a uh, swim bait would be appropriate bait. Not there. I would think the uh, worm soft plastic uh, in a Salt River craw mm. would whack them. Did you get a chance to see if there are any crayfish in there? Um, I didn't see any. Uh, I would think the the life expectancy of a uh, crawdad would be limited in that particular place. But anyway, hey, listen, Independence Day is coming up uh, real seriously. Take time to. Salute those that have made a lot of sacrifices. Uh, ordinary people doing extraordinary things for all of us. Uh, it's a price of freedom. I'm Don McDowell. Don Ortiz. John Culliver. God love you, man. Take the kids fishing, hug the bass boat, salute a soldier. Stay hydrated. Yeah. Next week.